If you're like me, one of the things that probably tripped you up when you first started using Gentoo was getting the changes that Portage makes automatically to your config files to stick. To illustrate what I mean, let's say that I want to install something with Merge. Let's say that I want to try out some new window managers, and I decide to emerge i3 and bspwm. Now I chose these packages for a reason. Let's enter and let it calculate. Give a moment. Okay, notice down here that Emerge says that I need to make certain changes in order to proceed. It says the following keyword changes are necessary to proceed, and it lists a couple of packages that need keyword changes, and the following use changes are need to proceed. At least a couple of packages that need those. And down here it says, would you like to add these changes to your config files? And it wants me to answer yes or no. So I have to make a decision here. I have to make these changes in order to install these packages. So, so let's say yes. All right, and notice it says now, auto unmask changes successfully written. Important, two config files and Etsy portage need updating. This implies that some further action is going to be needed in order to install these programs, right? And it's true. In fact, if I try to run the same exact command again, you know, I have to calculate again just one moment, you'll see that I get the exact same output. It says, would you like to add these changes to your config files again? So we can't install this program yet. Even though I said yes before, I do want to add these changes to my config files, some further action is needed. So why does it say this? Well, this is because Emerge does not overwrite pre-existing config files such as package keyword files and use files automatically. Instead, it creates modified copies of these config files and waits for the user themselves to decide whether to use the modified versions or not. Now, if we were to navigate to the Etsy portage directory and ls it out here, you will see that I have a file here called package.accept keywords. This file open it up, package.accept keywords. This file is used to mask packages based on what system architectures the Gentoo project considers the particular package is stable for. This is one of several config files that Portage can automatically make changes to if need be to install certain packages, and indeed it's one of the ones that we just made changes to a moment ago when we tried to emerge BSBWM and i3 along with ZZ Auto Unmask. As I said, Emerge does not write its automatic changes directly to pre-existing config files. This file already existed, so Emerge did not make an automatic change to it. Instead, it creates its own copies of these files and makes changes to those. And we can see the copy that was made. If we do ls-la for all in this directory, we can even see hidden files. And as you can see here, there is a file that begins with dot underscore cfg followed by a number. This file is an automatically generated copy of package.accept keywords. As you can see, it has the name package.accept keywords at the end of it, indicating that it's a copy of that file. We can cat it out to see for ourselves, and you can see that the contents look very, very similar to package.accept keywords, just with a little bit more stuff on the end of them. We can run diff on it, package.accept keywords, and the dot underscore cfg package I accept keywords. And we can see the differences between the two files are these lines here. And the, the lines that matter are actually going to be these ones that begin with equal signs. So this x11wm bspwm with the amd64 and the x11shkd also with the amd64. What this diff is actually showing us is the additions that Portage wants to make to our existing package I accept keywords file in order to install the programs that we asked it to install. Now, in order for us to actually go through with the Emerge, in order for us to download and install the packages, we're going to have to get Emerge to recognize that we want to accept these changes, and we do so by replacing the current copy of our config file, so just package I accept keywords here, with the new copy that Emerge generated itself. Now we could do this manually using like MV or CP to copy or move the files ourselves. And I actually did it that way myself for a while. But this is really not the best method of accomplishing this particular task. 
for a couple of reasons. For one, doing it manually means that it's prone to mistakes and user error. And since you're dealing with important system files, mistakes can be pretty bad. And two, doing it this way provides no backups unless you do so manually yourself. So what is the better way then? How should you go about accomplishing this particular and common administrative task? After all, this comes up quite a bit if you install a lot of programs. Well, the answer is to use the excellent dispatch-conf program. Dispatch-conf is used to update your system config files in a safe and sane way. It guides you through the update process and shows diffs in real time and has built-in rollbacking features, if, so if you do make a mistake, you can correct it pretty easily. Now we can use dispatch-conf very easily. We want to run it with root privileges, it needs root privileges, but you just do simply sudo dispatch dash conf and hit enter and as you can see it's showing us what looks like a diff as well as a couple of file names and locations and then down here it's waiting for some input it says this is one of two files that it wants to change and that makes sense because when we tried to emerge i3 and bspwm it made a modification to the keywords file as well as to our auto unmask file for use changes. So what can we do here in this menu? Well, there are several options that we have. We can press the H button for help, which will display an explanation of the various commands that dispatch conf recognizes. And there are actually four main commands that we're gonna take a look at here in this video. The first is U for update current config with new config and continue. What this means is it's going to take the file that starts with the minus 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 here, etc portage package, I accept keywords in this case, and replace it with the file that starts with plus 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 here, which is the dot underscore cfg file that we diffed out earlier. Update will replace the old version with the new version, thus implementing the new changes, if that's what we choose to do. We can see what those particular changes are right here in this diff. The second option listed here is z for zap or delete the new config and continue. If you decide you don't like the look of the diff, you can press Z to delete the new configuration and keep the old one and move on. The next option down here is N to skip to the next config, leaving all intact. What that means is that the two config files, the old one and the new one, will simply be left and you'll move on to the next config file to make your decision. As you can see here, there is a sequence. We have two config files that we need to deal with. And the last important option is the E for edit new config. What this will do is this will open the new configuration file in whatever editor you have defined in your editor variable. Like for me, it's Vim. Uh, on Gen 2, I think by default it's Nano, but I've set mine to Vim. But pressing E here will open the new config file in the editor of your choice and allow you to make changes to it. And then we'll run the diff again to show you why those changes have affected the new file. Well, let's go ahead and make a decision here. We want to keep those new files that were made automatically. We want to apply those changes to the package I accept keywords in the ZZ Auto Unmask file. So let's do U for update. As you can see, now it says two of two and it's showing us a different diff. That's because we've already applied the changes to the package dot accept keywords file and we've moved on to the package dot use directory to the ZZ Auto Unmask file which has all of our automatic use flag changes. Well, once again, we want to keep these changes because we want to successfully emerge those programs. So once again, let's hit U. And just like that, we are finished. We're back at a regular prompt. So now if I were to try to sudo emerge i3 and bspwm again, you can see that instead of saying we need to make config changes, it says, would you like to merge these packages? The config changes have been applied, and so we can go ahead and install the package if we want to. Before we close out of this video, I want to take a look at the dispatch conf man page to go over a few of its options and some of the important information about it. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that here under the usage section, it says that before running dispatch conf for the first time, the settings in Etsy dispatch conf dot conf should be edited. Um, I didn't actually have to do that. That file already existed on my system. And so dispatch conf worked the first time I tried to run it. Uh, but that's a pretty simple configuration file. Um, I left the defaults on, but you can make some changes there if you'd like to. And after that, it says, and the archive directory specified in Etsy dispatch conf dot conf will need to be created. Once again, that directory already existed on my system, 
But that archive directory is going to be where Dispatch Comp stores older versions of the config files that it has made it has made changes to so that you can roll back if you need to. There's some more information here in the man page, but this is a pretty simple, straightforward script, and the four main options that I covered along with the help command should be enough to let you use this program mostly to its fullest and definitely get the main use out of it of sanely managing your config files. One last thing I want to talk about is that it's important to keep in mind what config files this program is actually going to cover. Obviously, it covers the ones in the Etsy portage directory that have automated changes made to them by Merge from time to time, but there are a few other files on the system that it can actually cover too. One of them that kind of surprised me is it can let you make changes to the sudoers file, which controls who has access to sudo privileges. Of course, normally I make changes to that with the by sudo command, but one time I did update sudo, and when I ran dispatch conf the next time, it was trying to make changes to the sudoers file. So that's just something to keep in mind. This program can affect config files that are elsewhere on your system outside of Etsy Portage. Mostly, it does the files in Etsy Portage that have automated changes made to them. That is its main use. But just keep that in mind when cycling through dispatch conf that sometimes it might be trying to apply modifications to files that you didn't really expect. And that about does it for this video. Hopefully dispatch comp is useful to you. I know that it was very useful to me when I found it. It makes managing configuration file changes a lot easier. And it's just another excellent tool that's available in the Gen 2 ecosystem. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.